Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Well That's Interesting, and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new research paper which just came out last week on January 15th on vitamin B12. Uh, the paper is titled Association of Plasma Concentration of Vitamin B12 with All-Cause Mortality in the General Population in the Netherlands, and what this uh, research found was that among adults in the general population in the Netherlands, higher plasma concentrations of vitamin B12 were associated with a 25% increased adjusted risk of all-cause mortality per one standard deviation increase. So that's pretty frightening. It seems that vitamin B12 is associated with an increased risk of death, a pretty significant increased risk of death. Uh, so should we be worried about vitamin B12 supplementation? Should we avoid uh, having high vitamin B12 levels? So we're going to take a look at this research, break it down, and see if we can come to any conclusions. So first of all, the study has a prospective cohort design, so it's not the best type of study to prove a cause and effect relationship between plasma B12 concentrations and at risk of all-cause mortality. And on top of that, study participants were taken from the Prevention of Renal and Vascular End-Stage Disease Study, and the authors noted that this cohort was particularly enriched with patients with a component of chronic uh, kidney disease. So we're going to discuss this more towards the end of the video, but it could very well be the case that uh, there's a reverse causation effect going on here or that B12 just isn't a causal risk factor uh, in this case. Uh, it could be that um, these people have some sort of health issues or diseases that happen to cause elevated serum B12 concentrations, uh, but it's not the B12 that's actually you know, making them die earlier. It could just be the other health issues they have. What's also interesting about this paper is that they excluded those who were taking vitamin B12 supplements. So among the participants that were selected for the study, chances are the majority of them were getting their B12 from food sources, and obviously major food sources of vitamin B12 come from animal products like red meat, which aren't particularly healthy for a number of reasons like saturated fat, cholesterol, uh, heme iron, other things. So again, it might not be the case that uh, B12 is a causal factor in uh, all-cause mortality here. It might just be the case that the people with really high plasma vitamin B12 concentrations just have a really bad diet filled with lots of animal products, and because they're eating a lot of animal products which are high in B12, that's elevating their vitamin B12 levels, but the vitamin B12 isn't causing their earlier death, it's just their terrible diet, and there is some evidence of that in this paper. So those with the highest serum vitamin B12 concentrations were more likely to be older, have higher BMI and blood pressure, higher total cholesterol, glucose, and higher UAE rates. Uh, so these people who had the highest uh, concentrations of serum B12, uh, they were more likely to be overweight, fat, uh, had higher cholesterol levels, they were uh, they had higher blood pressure, uh, they were more, uh, more likely to suffer from kidney issues, they had higher glucose levels. All of these things are associated with meat eating. Meat eating tends to be associated with higher BMIs, uh, obesity, uh, glucose intolerance, so uh, you know the development of type 2 diabetes, higher cholesterol levels. So these people who, with the high B12 levels, it seems that they were just eating uh, more meat-heavy diets. Now, the authors did attempt to uh, adjust for this. They uh, excluded participants who had a history of cardiovascular disease, and they adjusted for things like uh, BMI, type 2 diabetes, glucose, total cholesterol, and they still found a statistically significant association between plasma vitamin B12 concentrations and uh, mortality. Now, uh, there's some issues with this. For one thing, uh, people who had the highest uh, serum B12 concentrations, they also ha uh, were more likely to take uh, cholesterol-lowering medications. So some of these adjustments might not have really mattered much because the issue here is that a lot of these people who are eating meat-heavy diets who had higher B12 concentrations, they were already taking medications for some of the health issues they're having. So that could skew the data a little bit. And on top of that, um, adjustments don't always work. They're not the best method of uh, trying to remove confounding variables. So um, it's pointing, like from what I see here, it's pointing towards you know these people with high B12 levels 
They just weren't healthy people to begin with. They were eating poor diets. And that was probably what was causing these health issues, this early mortality, not their high vitamin B12 concentrations. There's some other interesting information here. Inclusion of participants with history of vitamin B12 supplementation also did not materially change the results. So even after they included patients that had a history of B12 supplementation, that uh, didn't really change the findings. They still found this association between high plasma vitamin B12 and uh, mortality. That would suggest that B12 itself is a risk factor for all-cause mortality. So whether you're getting it from food or supplements, uh, you know, having elevated concentrations of B12 could be an issue. But that might not be the case uh, because, again, if you go back to the limitation section of their paper, the authors mentioned that they only had access to pharmacy records on injectable B12 supplementation, but not for over-the-counter tablets, and they had no data on the reason for performing the vitamin B12 injections. So, again, there's sort of, uh, you know, a black hole here. There's some missing information that's kind of important to kind of piece things together. Um, Every, like, everybody in this uh, study could have been taking over-the-counter B12 tablets. Who knows? They didn't have data on that. I'm not sure how many people were even taking injectable B12. I'm assuming not many, and there could be some weird reasons for it. Uh, some people might have been using injectable B12 to, in an attempt to treat some sort of illness they had. So, who knows? Uh, this isn't really good, uh, good evidence in favor of the idea that uh, high B12 concentrations have a direct causal relationship with mortality. Now, after exclusion of individuals with mild to moderate loss of kidney function, there was no association of plasma concentration of vitamin B12 with all-cause mortality after adjustment for history of cardiovascular disease. So they were able to find a model where there wasn't any statistically significant association between plasma concentrations of B12 and uh, all-cause mortality risk. So people who uh, had normal, healthy functioning kidneys and no history of cardiovascular disease, having high B12 levels didn't put them at higher risk of uh, death. Now, that would suggest that, uh, you know, if you're healthy, living a healthy lifestyle, you have no problems, uh, you know, B12 isn't an issue, but you start to see these associations with unhealthy people who are living unhealthy lifestyles. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is one of the few models where they weren't able to find a statistically significant association. The overall data set does find a pretty strong association between B12 and uh, mortality, so keep that in mind. And in the discussion section of this paper, the authors noted that the mechanism of association of plasma B12 and mortality is not well understood, and they suggest that high B12 levels are likely a consequence of liver damage or chronic kidney disease. So again, um, it's likely the case that uh, high B12 levels are a result of just poor diet, lifestyle, failing health, uh, not the other way around where B12 is the cause of these health issues. Uh, but the authors still cautioned against using B12 supplements in the absence of B12 deficiency given the, result, given the results of this paper. So what can we conclude from all of this? Uh, because, uh, you know, because in most of their models they did find a statistically significant uh, association between plasma B12 concentrations and mortality, even after so many adjustments, um, it could very likely be the case that, uh, you know, high plasma B12 is not the best thing for you. Uh, there definitely are a lot of limitations to this paper, and there are some confounding variables like uh, nutrition, which weren't accounted for. But given that almost all the models they came up with, uh, there was a statistically significant association between B12 and mortality, it is probably a good idea to avoid really high plasma B12 concentrations. Um, I would caution against, you know, just chugging down B12 vitamins or taking injections when it's not necessary. And um, I, I do think it is also quite likely that uh, this association is sort of exacerbated by just poor diet and lifestyle. I think in the future, you know, obviously randomized trials would be ideal to establish a cause and effect relationship here. Uh, but what I think would be really interesting is that in uh, future research, 
Uh, they look at vegan populations. I think that would uh, really get rid of some of these issues with confounding variables like nutrition. And um, it, you know, most vegans are getting uh, the majority of their B12 from supplements. So it would be kind of interesting to see if, uh, you know, these associations are uh, are seen in other populations of people with different diets and, uh, and lifestyles. Um, so. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, did you learn anything? Uh, what do you think about this B12 research? And as always, keep making those vegan gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and 